the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, but was was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to desire to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they so thick leaves together and made themselves morning pots. Then they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and the squire hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? And he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman, he said, I will surely multiply your pain and childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. And to Adam, he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree of which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread. Till you return to the ground. For out of it you are taken. For you are dust. And to dust you shall return. The man called the wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. And the Lord God made for Adam and his wife garments of skins and clothed them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. He cried to the Lord, the glory due his name. And and the the this reading today is taken from Romans 5. Therefore, just as sin entered into the world through one man, death through sin, so will death spread to all men because of all sin. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was the type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, for if many died <clears throat> through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. And the free gift is not like the result that, of that one man's sin, for the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. But the free gift following many trespasses brought justification. For if, because of one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, much more will those who receive the abundance of grace 
and the free gift of righteousness reign in life to the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as one treads, trespass led to condemnation for all men, so one act of righteousness leads to just, justification and life for all men. For as by one man's disobedience the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him up on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it's written, He will command His angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him again, It is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, All these things I'll give you if you will fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it's written you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him, and with all the angels came and were ministering to him. This is the gospel of our Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text for today. The temptation of Jesus Christ by the devil. Do we realize what's taking place there? We really don't know about how it is to go 40 days without food. Or to be the Son of God and have somebody say, if you really are, prove it. That's what's going on. You know, it, it was in Jesus' beginning of his ministry that he has to go out and face Satan himself. I would remind you that Michael, the, the archangel, did not rebuke him. But not say evil concerning Satan. And here we have Jesus standing in front of him and being told by Satan, literally told by Satan, make this these rocks in the bread so you can take care of your hunger. And it is Jesus' knowledge of what God has said. That is what he brings forward. 
successful in certain areas and have been unsuccessful in others. Mostly because of the strike that I just talked about. And now the congregation is pretty close to strike free between one another. But if we bring our baggage into our debates today, into the way in which we make decisions, we can tear ourselves apart. And St. Paul says, be careful about backbiting because you'll devour one another. And so, when I saw this text for today and the temptation of the Lord, I say, Lord, we live your life. We live in Christ and we suffer as he suffered. We see the cross that he carried and we struggle with that cross. The easy way was, well, put him up on the temple, and if he jumps out, and come sloping down in front of all those people who are there for prayer, why, they'll accept him as a Messiah in a second. Well, no need for a cross. Really? Lost the whole perspective of what's going on there, but that's the way the devil works it. You saw what happened in the the Old Testament lesson with Eve. Now let's not forget that Adam was standing right next to her when all this took place. Kind of like he was holding her out as a lab rat. You try it, and if you're okay with it, then I'll be okay with it. You shouldn't forget that. And I think when God made his decision that the male was to be the head of the house, he never said he wasn't supposed to cherish his mother's wife and listen to her. What he says is, I'm going to hold you responsible for your family. You should understand that when we read that text. Now, as we look at that floating down, we say, what's that all about? 
Well, it matches the psalm, doesn't it? We just spoke it in the liturgy this morning. Now, I capitalize all the he's that would be Christ in that intro so that you would see how well that met the target. The devil knew the scripture. And he knows God's going to destroy him. And he knows that he is the enemy number one. So we should know that we don't want to be in this camp. Sounds pretty simple. God set out things that we should do, what we're to live by, and if we live by them, we'll be fine. We're to work with love and peace and serve one another. We're to encourage one another, we're to help one another, help one another be successful. Use the means that you have. Now, the problem will be that we will all see different ways or different problems with the ways that are being presented. There's nothing wrong with that. That's why we're grouping together because group think is normally better than single person. But it's important to group think and cherish one another and appreciate the ideas and the help that's been offered. And so we live out our Christian life in service to one another in love and hope. And you have to hope to die, you know, what in the world is that? If you're granted good, long life, there's a certain point where you hope you're going to die so that you can be with the Lord. I hope that my hope is that you have that hope right now. You know, the, the really strong thing about what we're, we're looking at here was the final temptation. Matthew brings that third temptation out because, well, I don't know if that was the order. Luke has a different order. But he's trying for us to understand and teach us through the guidance of the Holy Spirit where to focus this whole temptation thing. Because the temptation thing is focused on us. Think about that last temptation. If you worship me, and if you read Greek properly, if you bow down to me one time, you don't have to go through crucifixion. You don't have to go through a lot of pain and suffering. It'll all be yours. You'll have all this glory. Well, that sure looks like, well, eat the fruit, you'll be okay. You'll know good for me. In this case, you won't have to be crucified. Jesus is answered. You worship the Lord your God and Him only will you serve. That's where your focus is. That's good Christians. Realize that it's the focus on God that saves us. We don't trust Jesus, and that is a focus on Him. If we don't listen, to him, if we are not his disciples, we don't have any hope. Understand that. Jesus said, Truly, my disciples, if you keep my commandments, what did he say? Well, the first commandment, you love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and your neighbors yourselves. So, as we make significant uh, deliberation today, the decisions today or further down the line is you see fit. Realize that you're the children of God. If God's way is the only thing that's important, that His will is God. And that our functioning as church is Christ's physical body here on this earth for a purpose. And that purpose is to bring others to Christ and to nurture one another. To worship the Lord of God and Him only serve. Amen. The peace of God and the path of all understanding in your hearts and minds and through faith and their life everlasting. Departing in peace. Amen. <laughs>